Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Bubbit. Bubbit. Put the man down. Stop it. Why would you do that right when we're starting the podcast? Sit down. Open up that Bible. My goodness, y'all. Rev Eddie here. Yeah, there's our warriors for Jesus. Who's excited for Jesus out there today? Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Let's war up. Get your war clothes on and let's get ready, get ready, and get ready one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Father, for another day, another opportunity to come forth and do your work, your will, your way. Wow, y'all. Thank him. Come on and join me in this Thanksgiving. Thank him. He's given us another day to see his mighty hand move in our situations, our families, our lives, our ministry. Come on. Who's excited out there? Come on. Come on. (laughs) Boy, we got a podcast today. We're going to finish off chapter 9 in the book of Romans. We'll be starting at verse 25 today. And oh, this is about to get good up in here. Come on, who's ready? Hallelujah. A shout out to all of you that are following on Facebook and YouTube. We thank God for each and every one of you. And know in your hearts, you are the best part of this ministry. If you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to me for personal prayer, perhaps you want to chat something out. Ask a question, get something off your chest. I'm available. I'm here. Amen. Come over to Facebook. Search Rev Eddie Wiggins. Now on Facebook, Rev Eddie is one word. No space, no dash, no dots, no periods. Just Rev Eddie Wiggins. Message me. We'll exchange numbers. That way we can talk it out, chat it out. We're going (laughs) to... We're going, if we need to, because I know it's rough out there. You want to cry it out? It's okay. I'm here for you. I will cry with you. If we got to shout it out, come on, let it out. Amen. But we're going to pray it out. And you got to know in your hearts that our almighty, our almighty God, amen, our miracle-working God, our all-seeing, all-knowing God, our can-do-anything God, is going to answer our prayers and work it out. Amen? Come on! <laughs> Let's get this thing going. A shout-out to our favorite island in the whole wide world, the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. And we just thank God for all of you that are following over there. From Dipalog City to Dipaton City to Palanco to Barangay, Districts 1, 2, and 3, all the way up into those mountains. And we thank you for following us on the mighty KISS FM, Palanco 90.1 on your FM radio dial, brought to you by our favorite DJ in the whole wide world, Joe Ryan. And we thank God for Woody Boy, too, Dr. Love in the Healing Hour. We just thank God for you, and we thank the Lord for keeping you safe, keeping his mighty hand of protection on all of you at that radio station as you bring forth his word into the hearts of all the beautiful people there. Amen. What God cannot fix does not exist. Come on, come on. Somebody get excited. (laughs) Hallelujah. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Nelia and her co-pastor, Pastor Mary Jane Pilare, working from Dipalog City all the way up into those mountains, looking for the lost, that they too may be found. Let's continue to pray for Samanga, and her ministry over in Zambia, Africa, as well as Minister Deborah Atwell on that beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent, hot, smoking island. 
<laughs> of Trinidad, Tobacco. Tobago, you you can tell we ready to get out of here and get to us a warm island, huh? It's raining again. Amen. Kids had to stay inside, but they're excited, and they can't wait to get into this Bible study today. Right, kids? <laughs> That's right. But let's keep Minister Deborah Atwell lifted up in our prayers, along with Charlotte and Dale, down under on that beautiful, beautiful continent of Australia and their ministry, amen, along with Mugoda Stanley and his ministry. And I mean, he's rocking the boat over there in Uganda, Africa. Let's keep him lifted up in our prayers, amen, along with Nick and Patricia and that prison ministry. I, they just added another one. <laughs> yeah, I heard from Nick this morning. They got another prison. I don't know how many prisons they're going to each week. I believe it's eight or nine. We just thank God for that ministry. And all those, this is a new one, all those that the Lord is putting in front of Nick and Patricia that they uh, may find out all about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and accept him as such. In Jesus' name, let's continue to pray for Pastor Mike and Pastor Joel. Uh, they're great friends with Nick and Patricia over there at that Victory Outreach in Fort Worth, Texas. We thank God for that ministry and Pastor Joel and his wife's six-day-a-week prison ministry. Amen? Those, those Texas folks. Them Texas Christians ain't playing, okay? They are doing a thing for our Lord. What's up, Sam Knight? We thank God for you. And let's keep my teachers, coaches, and spiritual mentors lifted up in our prayers. Coach Randy Lowe and his beautiful wife and all his family, relatives, loved ones, and ministry. And Coach Gecker. Hey, Coach. Hey, Dr. K. Thank God for the both of them. And let's keep their family and ministry lifted up in our prayers, along with Anthony and Jamal and their ministries down there on the beautiful, beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. Keep my brother in Christ, Rod, lifted up in your prayers, along with my sisters, Karen and Jan, my auntie and Nett, my nephew, Michael, and my niece, Elena, and we're praying for healing in Karen's body from head to toe. Everything functioning exactly the way the Lord designed that body to work in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Sarah and Captain Haynes and their powerful ministries lifted up in our prayers. And Sarah, you are healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in every area of your body in Jesus precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Dorothy and her dad and son Lee, Pastor Jody and her powerful ministry, Gail and Tex. Oh, we just thank God for Gail and Tex. Amen. We ended up a surprise meeting last night. Oh, it just warmed me and blessed me to my, my heart and soul. Uh, totally unexpected. Uh, Deb downstairs uh, and I had to do a little shopping, amen? And on our way back, we got to talking about food in the Middle East, and I was telling them about this hummus and tahini and baklava and falafel, and she got excited and wanted to see the place. She didn't know of a good one. We go in there, and a few minutes later, who hits the door? That cowboy, Tex and Gail, and we got to sit and chat it out. It was truly, truly a blessing. Let's continue to pl pray for their grandson, Mateo, totally healed, delivered, and restored in Jesus' precious and mighty name. A shout-out, and let's keep Jay Clark lifted up in our prayers. How you doing there, Jay? We thank God for you and all you're doing in and through and around this ministry. Let's continue to pray for Cheyenne and her children. Miss Helena Gore, we thank God for you, Miss Helena, and Ladera Turner and her entire family. Amen. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection over Ladera, her sister, her 
miracle granddaughter, all her family members. We thank you, Lord, for all you're doing, all you've done, and every great plan you have in your heart to do for Ladera and her family. Uh, we just thank God for you, Ladera, and uh, we'll see you at Bible study tonight. Amen. So, uh, yes, we will be as long as the electricity stays on. It's pouring down rain right now. But as long as we got electricity, <laughs> amen, and if we don't, we'll figure it out. But as long as we have electricity, I believe we will have our Bible study tonight, 4 o'clock p.m. on Facebook Live. That's 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific standard time amen let's continue to pray for evangelist tammy and her powerful ministry and daughter as well as ashley and her daughter and family and we thank you lord for protecting ashley and her daughter and lord we just ask that you reach into every heart of ashley's family members that they too may fall madly in love with you and serve you wholeheartedly for the rest of their days in jesus precious and mighty name a shout out to lucia and sasha we just thank god for the both of you we're going to continue lifting you up in our prayers and continue praying for lucia's sister martina and her brother john let's pray for april and her children whom are Bradley, Emma, Kyle, and Gracie, her husband John, her Nana Sandy, healed from head to toe, in Jesus' precious and mighty name, her Aunt Sandy, for salvation, healing, and deliverance, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. In April's prayer is that all her children and family fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we touch and agree it is done in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Jesse lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Thank God for you, Jesse. And we want to continue to pray for all his family, especially his uncle and his mom, that they too will come into the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and serve him for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep Lene, our truth warrior, lifted up in our prayers. I talked to her this morning, and we want to pray for her parents, especially, Lord, that you would heal them, keep your mighty hand upon them, restore them, keep them under your protective wing in Jesus' precious and mighty name. We want to, uh, uh, her mom's name is Linda. She was already on her prayer list. She's in the hospital. So let's pray hard for her. Amen. And uh, her children, her ministry, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, her business, and her finances. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for our Adrena Turner. I don't know how she won these kids over. Amen? I don't know if she's brought them a box of candy slip something under the door but she got these kids and we thank god for our ms turner amen our ms qs our quiet storm amen and we had a lovely time yesterday up in the prison we went in uh uh on something like zoom uh to their financial group and it went really well we had a good time amen uh Let's continue to pray for Adrena. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for protecting her in every possible way, shielding and protecting your heart, placing a peace and comfort in her heart as she ministers and pours out every blessing you put in her to those that you've placed before her. And we thank you, Lord, for healing her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And let's not forget we want to continue to pray for Adrena's cousin Wanda. Amen. And we just ask you, Lord, that you would heal Wanda's heart and every one of her family members' hearts at the loss of her son to gun violence just before the new year. Thank you, Jesus. Keep my boy Brian lifted up in your prayers along with DM Faith. 
from YouTube, salvation for their entire family in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep my boy John Fowler lifted up in your, our prayers, along with E.S. from YouTube and Scott Woodall. Oh, he sent pictures. We had the kids just loved Rosie and Tammy. They they got to see Tammy, amen. And they got to see some videos with him working with fellow employees and the horses and mules, and it was just awesome. We thank God for you, Scott, amen. And all that the Lord is doing in your life, how he's using you so mightily and bringing so many people into your life, the, your life that need him, and you're leading him straight to him. I just thank God for your ministry. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for all you're doing for Scott, for rebuking anxiety and depression away from that entire family. We thank you for his sister and all you're doing in her life. We thank you for his wife and all you're doing in her life. She's questioning. I can feel it now. <laughs> you're knocking at the door and she's wondering, wondering what she ought to do. That's a good thing, Lord. Lead her to you. And we thank God for Ray and all you're doing in his life, Barney, and all you're doing in his life, and all the rest of them that Scott is ministering to. Thank you, Jesus. Let's continue to pray for God's thunder to him. Oh, we just love you so much. And... The Lord, it's just, they got a miracle this morning. Amen. I'll let them tell it when they're ready. Amen. But they heard from God this morning, and they knew it was God. And they, they wrote it down. And it was beautiful what the Lord expressed to them. Oh, my God. They're on their way, y'all. <laughs> so let's continue to pray for our Thunder Twins, and we thank you, Jesus, for healing them in every area of their bodies from head to toe in Jesus' precious and mighty name, and we thank you for your delivering power in every area of their lives in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And Thunder Twins, we're going to join you in your ministry and uh, continue to pray for Kathy's healing in her hip done whole and complete in jesus precious and mighty name and for your nephew jamie seven years old so precious so cute and for his uh total uh healing and deliverance and restoration in his mind heart and soul and body in jesus precious and mighty name let's keep pastor tim lifted up in our prayers amen he made it home, amen, ain't heard from him since, and that's good. First ministry is at home. Let's keep his uh, lovely wife, Heather, and his beautiful daughters, Jaden and Haley, lifted up in our prayers. And let's pray for Christina with a K, Christ in her heart and Christ in her name, down in beautiful downtown Arkansas, amen. Let's continue to pray for her son, her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every good thing that God has put on her heart to do for his kingdom. Let's pray for our audience uh, down under on the beautiful continent of Australia. Let's start with Paris and Julie and Margaret and Tyla and Wangui Inn from Melbourne, Australia, Angelica Lewis, Zarlia, Paris and Martin and Julie and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. Amen. Let's not forget Laura from YouTube and her daughter Micah. Micah, you are coming out better than you went in. In Jesus' name, you're coming out with a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Gene from YouTube. Amen. Christine Starr, Robert Minnick, Ikina from Houston, Texas, and Ken and Cindy. Oh, we just thank God for the both of you and all you're doing in and around and through this ministry. And we thank Thank you, Jesus, for all you're doing in Ken's life, Cindy's life, their marriage, their home, their family, 
their income, their works, and everything they touch. We just call it blessed in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Carly and Pick a Moon from uh, India. Amen. A great job, a wonderful job, a high-paying job, and a beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent Christian husband for her from her tribe in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for Marvin Cage, Helen Geddes, Leah Henderson, and her entire family, my girl Charlie, amen, as well as healing and protection for Kelly and her five-year-old son. We thank you, Lord for this hedge of protection and wall of fire that you have around Kelly. No more abuse in Jesus' precious and mighty name. No more, uh, uh, oh, and healing, Lord. Healing for their hearts for any abuse they've already suffered in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And here's our Anna from Alabama. And I'm telling you, she had a huge cup of coffee. One of them kind that take two arms to get around that cup this morning. We thank God for you, Anna. We thank God for your husband, Terry, your beautiful daughter, Valerie, those gorgeous grandkids of yours, Odie and Atlas. And we thank the Lord for all he is doing in your family. We thank him for that hedge of protection around you and your family and salvation and healing and deliverance like never before, for your son-in-law in in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Christ-like minds and peace and healing for Raven, Shiloh, and Harley. Let's also pray for Gloria and her children, husband and brother Vincent. We thank you, Lord, for healing Uh, her husband's heart and kidneys. We thank you for her brother Vincent and that He needs a miracle in his mind, Lord. And we know that uh, that is your plan to heal his mind. He will come out with a Christ-like mind, a psalm mind filled with love and power in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And, Lord, we know you've got people close to Vincent in that VA, children of yours that you can send to minister to him. And, Lord, keep your mighty hand upon the Steving family. Take the blinders off of their eyes and reveal yourself to each and every one of them in a very real and powerful and undeniable way in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for Lakeisha and her ministry son and family, my spiritual family, Michelle, my girl, Angelina, Gilbert, and Mia, and Lord, just have your way in each and every one of their hearts, minds, souls, spirits, and bodies, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for Minister Prophetess Laura Solis and her ministry, amen, and her prayers for peace and forgiveness throughout her ministry and family. And we want to continue to pray for her son, George, her daughter, Adrena, and her cousin, Violet. Let's keep John Garcia from YouTube lifted up in our prayers, totally delivered from drugs in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for Herman, Herman over in Stockholm, Sweden. We're praying that he would find a spirit-filled church that will welcome him and that he will feel welcomed at, that he may draw closer to the Lord and feel God's power in his life. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, keep Ashley and Jet lifted up in our prayers, along with Alonzo Holloway. Amen. And I got the name Fred here, but then it says underneath, Tiffany, the man that will be saved. I think he doesn't know who he is in Christ. (laughs) And we're praying that the Lord will reveal his true identity In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep this family of warriors for Christ lifted up in our prayers, Carrie and Ron and Ruby and Lucy. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing Lucy's tummy, whole and complete, 
in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Derek and his family lifted up in our prayers. Y'all over there, sh- oh, you got some packages today. Oh, Derek must, uh-huh, they're nodding. Yep, yeah, that was Derek. You sent them some goodies along with Jesse and everybody else. They just think that FedEx works for them. <laughs> they write them little love notes and draw pictures for the FedEx guy. It's too cute. But we thank God for you, Derek, and your entire family, especially your mom and your brother. And we're praying hard. We're praying hard that the, they will open up their hearts and receive all the goodness that God has for them, that they too will give their lives to Jesus wholeheartedly and become those warriors that Christ created them to be. Amen. Let's continue to pray for Marie Eleanor, her husband and son John, as well as Boyd Lamar from YouTube. A nice place, a new place, a safe place, great job and healing in his heart. Let's keep Chrissa and her husband and all her family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in our prayers over there in Kenya, Africa, especially her brother Benedict. Salvation, healing, and deliverance from drugs and alcohol and lifestyles not pleasing to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he too will become that warrior, fall in love with Jesus, and serve him the rest of his days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's pray for protection over Angelo Highsmith. Let's continue to pray for Al Battle, James Mayer, and Cody, all delivered from drugs in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Mario, for his salvation, and we're praying against the spirit of anger and rage throughout this ministry, all of our families, all of our homes, all of our workplaces in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Let's continue to uh, pray for Auntie Helen. Yay! How you doing there, Auntie? Let's keep Michelle Vanal lifted up in our prayers and all her ministries. Amen. And let's keep running. All of these kids love them some Ronnie. Amen. I don't know what she look like. They got some tamales. I don't know what they are munching on over there. They move so fast. You know, it's hard to take a picture of kids, right? You tell them, come here, I'm going to take your picture, and you might get an ear. They just always moving, always scurrying around. We thank God for you, Ronnie, and we thank God for sharing you with us. And we're with you. We're with you. We're those warriors that will shoulder up with you all the way through those pearly gates. We don't give up. Amen. And we thank God for all you're doing in and through and around this ministry. And we want to keep you and your entire family in every situation lifted up in our prayers. Thank God for Ronnie. Let's keep Clarissa who was really, really on fire for the Lord down there in Austin, Texas. And the Lord is revealing many, many wonderful things in her life. Amen. Let's pray for Janet and Mimi, as well as Jahan from England. Amen. No more chronic dry eye in the mighty name of Jesus. Restored. Oh, girl, you're going to be able to cry and tear and keep your eyes moist. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for Pastor Larry and his ministry over in Gippelog City, his beautiful family, his lovely wife, his gorgeous daughters, Jaira and Micah, Angelica, Angelica's heel in her heart, whole and complete in Jesus' precious and mighty name, Micah back in school in Jesus' precious and mighty name, and provisions only God can give for your entire family and ministry in Jesus' precious and mighty name. We declare that the Spirit of God that you have freely given the Christian staff, inmates, and volunteers of Solano Prison and every prison causes them not to walk in a spirit of fear or timidity, but instead they walk in power, love, 
and a sound mind. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that because of your presence in them, every place that the soles of their feet shall step becomes holy ground and belongs to them in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Heavenly Father, your presence has caused them to become a great and generous blessing to everyone that enters these prison walls. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for demonstrating your amazing love towards them every day. We choose to walk in the example of love that Hosea showed towards Gomer, even in her unfaithfulness to him. We choose to move in an abundance of love, showing respect to all, even when we are faced with pain and unfaithfulness. We Follow your example, Heavenly Father, and walk in your way of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for continually breaking off every chain off of every heart and setting each and every one of these captives free. Receive the prayers of incense, rising up day and night from the men, staff, and volunteers on these prison grounds. Receive them on behalf of every family, person, and place represented. We declare... And thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy, health, freedom, rest, the protection, and the peace of God rule in the hearts of every person. God, you are always good. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Who's ready for a word? Come on. Turn your Bible over to the ninth chapter of Romans. We'll be picking up at verse 25 in today's lesson. Amen. And just so excited about this. This is powerful. Amen. I'm going to be reading out of the new living translation for your ease. But we're going to back up into yesterday's lesson, just a few verses so you can catch the flavor of this soup and go right into today's lesson. Amen. I'm going to back up to verse 22. Amen? In yesterday's lesson, uh, we're in Romans 9, and it says, in the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls, who are destined for destruction. He does this to make the riches of his glory shine even brighter on those to whom he shows mercy, who were prepared in advance for glory. And we are among those whom he selected, both from the Jews and from the Gentiles. Today's lesson. Concerning the Gentiles, God says in the prophecy of Hosea, And this comes out of Hosea 2 and 23. Those who were not my people, I will now call my people. That's us, y'all. Amen. And I will love those whom I did not love before. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And verse 26 says, Then at the place where they were told, you are not my people, there they will be called children of the living God. Now, out of the Greek, and perhaps in your King James, it may read sons of the living God. Let's read that again. Then at the place where they were told, you are not my people, there they will be called children of the living God or sons of the living God. That's powerful, y'all. Amen. This free gift of salvation, the privilege to worship the one true living God, to fall in love with him. Amen. And receive every blessing and promise that he has for his children was always Available for anyone, for everybody, you see? And yet, what 
is being addressed here in Romans is the fact that the Gentiles coming in and putting their faith in Christ, being made right in God's sight by faith is a struggle for the children of Israel. They're at that place, don't forget, where they feel they can earn this. They can work for this. Perhaps they deserve this. So this transition coming out from under the law, you see, it's the law that's burdening them, you see. But they were never supposed to be burdened by God's law. They were supposed to be operating in faith. They chose not to operate in faith throughout their history and to earn it <laughs> by keeping the law, but yet nobody could. So, you see, it's a sad place where they were at how they decided to treat God, you see, when he made it so simple from his word through the prophet, how easy it is just to have faith in him, in, in him and to love him. It's not on your efforts, God is saying to them throughout their history. It's on mine. <laughs> I chose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. So there's a struggle. We're going to get further into this struggle. Let me see what I got on the uh, in the study guide before we move on. Amen. <coughs> and so here, <clears throat> about 700 years before Jesus' birth, Hosea told of God's intention to restore his people. Paul applies Hosea's message to God's intention to bring Gentiles into his family after the Jews rejected his plan. Amen? <laughs> so, let's continue back in Scripture. This is verse 27 <clears throat> of Romans chapter 9. So we just, we just heard heart, God's heart toward the Gentiles. This is directed to the Jews, amen? And concerning Israel, Isaiah the prophet cried out through the people of Israel, I'm sorry, though the people of Israel are as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant will be saved. Oh, let's stop right there and chat that thing out right there. Are you with me? It's the rejection of God throughout their history. It's the rejection of the Messiah, Jesus. The only one that can save them got us got us in real good. God used them, used that situation, bringing us in, you see, and saying, there's a people I never loved. They've been searching for me for forever. I now love them. It's like God is trying to make Israel jealous so that they too will return. You see? But those hardened hearts, y'all, See, that's the issue. Pride. Self-righteousness. Wickedness. Embracing the flesh. These are the weapons that Satan uses against God's children to keep us separated from God. And now we're seeing a chosen nation separated from God fell right into Satan's trap because he enticed that flesh. They're doing all kind of stuff they shouldn't be doing. And what we glean from this, going into these last days, this tribulation, we want to stay close to God. We don't want this thing to be religious. 
We want this to be pure relationship, just a love affair with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hang on <laughs> to his unchanging hand. Amen. <laughs> Ladera know a little something about that. And Ronnie know something about that. Amen. A lot of you. Ronnie knows about that. Amen. Anna from Alabama knows about that. The longer you run with him, the more you go through. You see, the more you realize it's just a whole lot easier <laughs> staying close to the Lord, staying in relationship with him, running with him every day. Because things that pop up in our lives, we didn't expect. It is a surprise. What? <laughs> the house burnt down. <laughs> the car's wrecked. My child's in the hospital. What? We didn't know. And it's a surprise. God knew before he laid the foundations of the earth that this day was coming. You see, so it didn't surprise God. And it's just safer and better and more rewarding for us to do this thing called life hugged up on him. Lord, I just heard my child's in the hospital. My husband's in the hospital. It's okay, child. Let's go see him. I'm with you. In that relationship, you see? And so the trials and tribulations and struggles that the Lord has allowed into our lives that he's been there with us to see us through these situations was to prepare us for these last days. He's making warriors, not wimps. But those that won't run with him in that close, intimate, loving relationship end up in a place where they stay lost. He's there for them. This invitation is open for everyone. You see? It's not just Jews rejecting our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. The majority of this world reject Jesus. We pick on the Jews because we're reading Scripture. But look around. There are many countries where this word is outlaw. You better not come up in here talking about the name of Jesus. We will lock you up, cut your hands off, your feet off, and then we'll cut your head off. Don't do it. All right? So the world is hostile to Jesus. What a privilege. What a beautiful place we're in that we're in relationship with him, we're loving on him, we're hugged up next to him and allowing him to guide our lives. Amen? But everything that we've gone through is in pre preparation for these last days. If you can't stand with the foot soldiers, Pastor Hubbard always used to say, what are you going to do when the horsemen get here? I asked her what she meant by that. Because I I, I'm thinking that's scripture. She, she said it all the time. And in a way, it is. If you can't get through this thing called life now, while it's easy with your hand in the hand of the man that stilled the water, that ought to be a song, huh? Nah, it wouldn't work. Are you with me? If you can't stand now, what you going to do? When the horsemen get here, there's two ways to view that. You're battling on the battlefield, hand to hand, and then the cavalry comes in. If you can't handle the hand to hand, how are you going to get those mounted soldiers off of them horses? See, this thing is the battlefield, and the prize is our soul. We're going to war for our healings, war 
for the salvation of our family members. This is serious. Let me throw something in here. Let me interject something here. Amen? Look over your life. Look back. Look back in your life. All the struggles, the horrors, the nightmares, the abuse, the pain, the suffering. Satan really wanted to destroy us. And he brought it all against us. That's one side of the coin. Flip the coin. Jesus went to that cross for you and me and died the cruelest, worst death a person could die. I mean, he suffered for us that we would live forever with him. Now you got both sides of the coin. Look how much, how important <laughs> we are to the Lord. I mean, we got spiritual realms fighting over us. We can get to a place where we get so beaten, so tortured, so down, we don't even want to live anymore. It's like, darn. Why does this keep happening to me? You know what I'm saying? That's how important we are. That the devil and all his demons would come after us while the Lord and all his angels are fighting for us. We're in the middle, yo. That's how special each and every one of you are to the Lord. And at this ministry, we know that. And that's why you're so special to us. Amen? And that's why we're going to keep going. Come on, let's get back into this word. Let's reread this. So we heard what the Lord had to say about the Gentiles. Those who were not my people, I now call my people. And I will love those whom I did not love before. So we got God's love concerning Israel. Back at tw Verse 27, it says, And concerning Israel, Isaiah the prophet cried out. He cried out. This hurt getting it out. It hurt his heart. <laughs> to have to speak of his own people, but in this manner, but he's speaking for the Lord. It's what a prophet does. And he says, Though the people of Israel, as are as numerous as the sand on the seashore. There's so many you can't count them. God did this. What a blessing. God made us so huge we can't be counted. Though the people of Israel are as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a remnant will be saved. That's heartbreaking. But then we got 8 billion people on this planet. I don't know if I want the Lord to reveal to me how many are going to make it into heaven. I just want to work as hard as I can. That number might be heartbreaking, y'all. Amen? He told me 50% of the church, that's why I testify in churches, he said 50% of the church that are in that those pews every Sunday are on their way to hell. It's the heart. It's not the location. It's not where you sit. It's your heart and your relationship with Christ that gets us into heaven. So all of them are fakers, frauds, hypocrites? I don't know what the issue is. But like with Israel, only a remnant will be saved. He goes on in verse 28, for the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth quickly and with finality. Hmm. Verse 29, and Isaiah said the same thing in another place. 
If the Lord of Heaven's armies had not spared a few of our children, we would have been wiped out like Sodom, <laughs> destroyed like Gomorrah throughout their history. They rebelled against God, and he punished them, and tens of thousands, hundreds and thousands would die. Amen? You got the Holocaust, that horror that occurred upon this nation. You see? Only a remnant will be saved. Amen? Let's go to the study guide there before we wrap up this chapter. Amen? Isaiah prophesied that only a small number of God's original people, the Jews, would be saved. Paul saw this happen. I'm sorry, Paul saw this happening in every city where he preached. Although he went to the Jews first, he did. Remember the book of Acts? He always ran up in a synagogue first upon arriving in town to minister the good news of salvation to his people, the Jews. <laughs> he would generally get in a whole bunch of trouble <laughs> fooling with them folks. He might not get to stay in town. But that's where his heart was. Amen. And we read it in the book of Acts. Amen. In our studies, that <laughs> there was times he just said, "You know what? I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I'm gonna give it to the Gentiles. You don't want it? Fine. Gentiles will take this good news." Amen. So, uh, even though he went to the Jews first, relatively few ever accepted his message. Amen. And so. I don't know. I've seen pastors get hard from them. As I watch them get hard, hard-hearted, they're ministering the good news. Pastor Hubbard, unfortunately, got that way. It had to have been heartbreaking for her in a deliverance ministry in full power. I mean, that woman was doing a thing. She raised the dead four times. Amen? Cancer, gone. I don't care what kind it was. Tuberculosis, gone. AIDS, gone. She'd prayed for something, bam! God was on it. And there were times I'd hear being nosy, <laughs> probably stuff I ain't supposed to hear. But you know, them nosy folks down at the church, right? I would hear her praying with someone, and an individual kept cheating on his wife. And she kept telling him, now you know you're going to burn in hell for this, right? And we're praying for you. You don't have this to do. You have a beautiful wife. Beautiful children, beautiful family. You need to stop this. I told you not to talk to that woman no more. You had a mistress. You see? And he'd tell her he's going to be strong and thank her. She'd anoint him with oil and all of this. Pray that spirit off him. And in two weeks, he's back cheating on his wife again. Disappointment, I think. Can harden the heart of the pastor's. When I saw hers, because she'd get snappy after that. <laughs> Almost mean sometimes. Because she'd pray so hard. She'd put her whole heart and life and everything she was into God's people. And the constant disappointment, I think, led to making her mean. And seeing that and knowing I had a calling, I told the Lord, I'm never going to get that way, Lord. I don't want to get that way. Protect my heart. Because I didn't like being treated mean. And sometimes it would occur. You see what I'm saying? Meanness is 
can turn into blindness too. You see? And I wonder, as the Lord told me, 50% of those sitting in church every Sunday are on their way to hell to definitely get in these churches and give my testimony about hell. I'm wondering about those pastors. You know what I'm saying? Are their hearts still soft and pliable and pure, and no matter what they have to go through with God's people, they're going to stay in there on this battlefield with them? Do they get hard? Do they quit? I don't know. We're just chatting it out right now. You can type in the comment, comment. What's on your heart about that? My thing is this. We've got to keep going, y'all. And we got to keep doing it God's way. And it's with an open heart. You know, Miss Turner, Miss Drina Turner and I have talked about this. Her heart is very open. And she gets hurt a lot ministering. And it's not so much who she's ministering to sometimes, but just having the ability to. She works in a, uh, an, an institution that would rather not have Jesus spoken of in that institution, you see? So they're making it hard for her to pour it out. And I've just assisted to her. Thank God for every obstacle. Because that just means that everything you're trying to pour out is so powerful, it has to be opposed. Do you see? And so, I want to get into verse 30, and then we're going to go over to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20. And I want to talk about this heart condition. We need our hearts right, y'all. We got to love each other. We got to care for one another. We got to lift each other up. Iron, sharpening iron, willing to work with each other. Amen. And everybody's not the same. But see, this is not the world. This is the body of Christ that Jesus is returning on the clouds for. We are going to make it through this tribulation with love and his power. We're going to see miracles the world has never seen as the Lord protects his through these last days. Expect that. <laughs> Amen? So, come on, let's get into verse 30, because I know this is heartbreaking for Paul in his ministry I know it's heartbreaking for the Lord that he's done so much, so often, so powerfully for this nation, and yet they just spit on him and reject him. You see? And see, he sees the big picture. Daughter, son, if you don't turn around, I'm going to lose you forever to that pit of hell. What is so difficult about this? Why are you making it so hard? You're trying to earn something. You can't earn. You're trying to earn something I'm trying to freely give you. <laughs> you got it twisted, like the kids say. All the good things that I have for you, you're trying to earn. I'm just saying, come here, open your hands. I got something for you. But you won't even come to me. You won't allow me to protect you. You won't allow me to love you. You won't allow me to guide you. You won't allow me to help you. But I have so much. I told you. Uh, a guy gets to heaven. I think I've mentioned this before. A guy gets to heaven, and the angel's giving him a tour, and there's this huge 10-story building, no windows, one little tiny door at the bottom. 
beautiful in white. And he asked the angel, hey, what's that? Nah, you don't want to know. Let's keep going. Noah lives over here, you know, continuing the tour. And the man's like, no, 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 hold up. What is that place? Don't ask. You don't want to know. Hey, uh, Abraham and Luke, I think that's them over there under the shade tree. And the man's like, I got to know. And runs and leaves the angel <laughs> and runs over to that 10-story building. Opens the door, looks inside, it's shelves. The whole 10-story building is just shelves all the way around with beautiful white boxes with red ribbon. And he's looking. There's millions of them. And he's looking. And the angel catches up. <sighs> You took off running, dude. What are you doing? You just had to come up in here. Yeah. What's all this? What are all these gifts? The angel said, I told you you didn't want to come up in here. That's everything God had for you that you'd refuse to ask him for. Are you with me? So only a remnant. How heartbreaking. We got work to do, church. Let's tell everybody we can about the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See if we can change the odds in these last days. Amen. Verse 30. Amen. I want to back up into 29 to go into 30. And as I, I and Isaiah said the same thing in another place. If the Lord of heaven's army had not spared a few of our children, we would have been wiped out like Sodom, destroyed like Gomorrah. What does all this mean? Verse 30 says, even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, they were made right with God. <laughs> Let's read that again. Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, they were made right with God. And it was by faith that this took place. Amen? It was by faith. That's the point. And that's what we want to glean out of this study in Romans. It's by faith, y'all. <laughs> Amen? It's not about your certificates on the wall, accomplishments, trophies. No. You can't earn this. It's by faith that we're saved. And thank God for the grace to make that possible, to open that door. It was his grace that blessed us with the salvation plan. And we receive it by faith in Christ and what he did for us on that cross. It's that simple. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's, <laughs> that's the wrench in the gears that many people can't grasp. How can it be that simple? Truly we have to earn it. Truly we have to work for it. Truly we need laws and regulations and bylaws to make it hard so that we really feel like we earned it. I don't know. Put your thoughts in the comments. Amen? Let's read that again. Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, they were made right with God. And it was by faith that this took place. But the people of Israel, who tried so hard to get right with God by keeping the law, never succeeded. <laughs> Why not? Verse 32. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of trusting in him. That's faith. They never trusted God. They weren't even going to the promised land. We told them, here it is, the land of milk and honey. The land I promised your forefathers. 
Go on in, children. Enjoy yourself. You're going to find homes fully furnished. You're going to find shelves and cabinets fully packed with everything you need. You're going to find fields in the backyard filled ready to harvest. Mad fruit and vegetables and all kind of stuff. You're going to find corrals filled with cows and sheep. <laughs> you don't have to buy this. I'm giving it to you. Come on in. And they refused to go. They didn't trust God. <laughs> he got them out of Egypt. Now that was amazing and brought glory to God. They didn't do anything. They didn't fight to get out. They didn't go up against Pharaoh's army and win their freedom. God gave it to them. Amen? And when Pharaoh decided to chase them, they got to that Red Sea. They were trapped. God brought them through that sea on dry ground. <laughs> Sixty-foot walls of water on each side. Amen? Maybe 100 feet. Now, they had to trust God then. I know the ground, the, the, the ground is dry. It's a long way from this side to the other side. You are going to hold this water up, right? Well, I bet they scurried along that dry ground. You see? Get to the other side. The enemy is swallowed up right in front of their eyes. Why aren't they trusting God? They never did. Bringing water out of a rock when they're thirsty, providing for their every need for over a year, and then they marched and left for another year to get to the promised land. Had a couple of battles, and God gave them victory. And now they're there at the border. Come on in, child. This land is yours. No. We want to go back to Egypt. What? <laughs> I guess the angels ran up to the Lord on that one. They're not going in, Lord. What's wrong with them? <laughs> I don't know that there's any drug dealers in that wilderness. They out of their mind. You brought them all the way here. We guided them. Fire <laughs> by night. A cloud of smoke during the day. You got them here. And they refused. And it's been that way ever since, y'all. I'm here to tell you, and you know what a wreck my life was. We can trust God. I've gotten to the place in life, and getting here was a task because I'm trying to trust my clients, trust banks, trust my business, trust myself I found out I can't trust nothing but God never let me down if there's anything in life we can trust believe me it's God amen come on now so watch this let's back up and look at this unfaithfulness on a part of the people that the Lord loves so much, how they just refuse to trust in him, refuse to believe in him. Okay, verse 32. Amen. <coughs> Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God. That was their error. You're trying to get right with God. We can't get right with God. The Gentiles weren't trying, it says. Let's reread this whole thing. What does all this mean, verse 30 says? Even though the Gentiles were not trying to follow God's standards, they were made right with God. And this was by faith. And it was by faith that this took place. And it was by faith that this took place. But the people of Israel, who tried so hard to get right. They tried so hard 
to get right with God by keeping the law never succeeded. Why not? Because they were trying to get right with God by keeping the law instead of by trusting in him. They stumbled over the great rock in their path. What was that great rock in their path? Jesus, their promised Messiah, the one the prophets had spoke of thousands of years before he appeared on the scene. They knew he would come, but when he got here, they stumbled over him. Are you with me? They stumbled over the great rock in their path. God warned them of this in the scriptures when he said, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble. Now, I have an asterisk there. Let me see. That was for 33. Yes, that is coming out of Isaiah 8 and 14. Isaiah 28 and 16. Amen. I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble. A rock that will make, that makes them fall. But anyone who trusts in him, oh, will never be disgraced. Amen. Now, I want to break down this cornerstone, this rock. Amen. Now, I know something about construction was in it 40 years. Amazingly, in an arch, you couldn't have an arch without the cornerstone. The cornerstone was at the center of the top of the arch, and it was shaped different than the rest of the bricks that they would bring up on each side to form that arch. It held the arch together. Without that cornerstone and its cuttings, it was cut different. The corners were cut off this stone, you see. It held everything in place so tight that arch would never fail. In construction, in a building, they're going to build a church, they're going to build a high-rise, they're going to build a building. There is what's called the cornerstone. The cornerstone is on a corner of the building that trues the rest of the building, making sure that all the way around it's going to be level and true. So as the building goes up, because you used that cornerstone, you leveled it first, the rest of the structure will be level. Are you with me? So let's go over to Luke chapter 20, verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 18. Well, we're going to back up to 17. Amen? Jesus had just told the parable of the evil farmers who was Israel. Amen? The landowner was God. You got these evil farmers. You got the owner who had gone away for a while sending his servant, the messengers, the prophets, to get his share of the crops. And they were rejecting every servant, beating them, killing them, chasing them off. And the owner said, I know, I'll send my son, Jesus. Amen. And he won't kill him too. So he just finished telling them this parable. And in verse 17 in Luke 20, it says, Jesus looked at them and said, then what does this scripture mean? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Now this is in red, and Jesus is referring to himself and his entrance into human history 
through Israel. Verse 18, everyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces. And it will crush anyone it falls on. Well, here's Israel's response to what he just asked them. Verse 19, the teachers of religious law and the leading priests wanted to arrest Jesus immediately. <laughs> well, that's a heck of a response to a question. <laughs> you won't answer the question, but you want to pull out the hand because, oh, we got to get rid of you. <laughs> it hit that heart. It hit that heart, those evil, mean, wicked hearts. And now they want to arrest him and kill him. It says they wanted to arrest Jesus immediately because they realized he was telling this story against them. They were the wicked farmers, but they were afraid of the people's reaction. See, so full of pride, so full of flesh. They didn't dare go after Jesus in front of the people because they're trying to look good in front of the people as evil as they are. But yet they're coming against the very one that has come to save them all. They don't want salvation. They want to kill Jesus. And they don't want anyone else to receive the salvation that had come into the world. But let's back up. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Amen? And that comes out of Psalm 118 and 22, what Jesus is quoting. And everyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone it falls on. We're the ones, okay, who stumbled over the stone called Jesus. That's us. I'm going to explain that. Amen? We're the ones that stumbled over the stone and we were broken to pieces. And it will crush anyone it falls on. Those are the ones who reject Jesus and therefore will end up in that pit of hell for forever, for eternity. They will be crushed in judgment by the same stone that we tripped over and we were broken into pieces. Broken into pieces is not a bad thing. Broken into pieces means a new heart, a repair by God. It's better to be broken before the master's feet, the one who can fix us, than to be crushed in judgment by him. We got to be broken, y'all, because we got to lose pride. We got to lose arrogance. We've got to lose the evil that we picked up on in our lives. This is deliverance. That's the fire. We got to be refined by the mighty hand of God, and he's got to turn up the heat to do that. Yep, and that breaks off all that madness that was in our lives so that we can remain pure and holy as he repairs us and fixes us. Amen? Let me go to this study guide on this. Amen? The word broken conjures up uniformly negative images, broken bones, broken hearts, broken toys. These kids know all about broken toys. Amen? (laughs) Let me add to that. Broken promises? Oh, did they say broken relationships? No. So much has been broken in our lives in this ministry. Amen? Especially our hearts. Through the abuse, through the hatred, through the suffering. Those long, horrible roads we've gone down. Amen? Amen? Let's get back to study guide. You don't want something you value 
to be broken. And isn't that the truth? Conversely, in God's dictionary, brokenness is not only good, but also essential. He uses it. I'm sorry. He uses only people whose hearts, volition, and pride have been broken. Are you getting that? He uses only people whose hearts, volition, and pride have been broken. Jesus gives a double warning. Those who stumble over that stone himself will be broken to pieces while it will crush anyone it falls on. God offers a choice of brokenness. Those who cast themselves on Jesus, that's us, y'all, with all our broken parts, everything broke in our lives, we cast ourselves on Jesus. Are you with me? We're submitting, it, let's see, those who cast themselves on Jesus, submitting their wills and all that they are to him, will be broken by him of arrogance, hard-heartedness, and self-centeredness. In other words, the reprobate mind breaks off. The narcissistic personality disorder <laughs> gets broken off of us. All types of things. Deliverance. The drugs get broken off. The alcohol, the gambling, the pornography, the lifestyles that we used to live, all that gets broken off, y'all. Amen? It is not a pleasant process, <laughs> but an absolutely necessary one. People don't want to go through the refiner's fire. They don't want to hit the potter's <laughs> table, the potter's wheel. They don't want to be that lump of clay. Because the uh and the uh and the uh, this is the master forms us, takes out of us what doesn't belong puts in us what's missing. They don't want to do that. Think of it another way. Amen? Think of it like a big old boulder in the front yard. And a man with a hammer and a chisel. It's just a big old ugly rock. But in the sculptor's hand, he makes a beautiful figure of a woman a beautiful figure of a man, perfect in detail, all the way to the toenail. Amen? Just and with each strike, yes, it hurts. But that was one ugly boulder to start. You didn't even know anything beautiful was in that sculpture. But when the sculptor got done, and that sculptor is God himself, there we are, perfect in every way. Beautiful eyes sculpted into that stone. You see what I'm saying? Beautiful figures. Beautiful hands and arms. Are you with me? And it's a process. And yes, it hurts as he shapes, forms, molds, makes us into what he wants us to be, what he created us to be. But it's okay, because when he's done, we're a masterpiece in his sight, a masterpiece in his, <laughs> in his mind, a masterpiece from his heart, standing in a very broken and dark, evil and sin-sick world. And we become that light. His light in us shining in this dark place, telling the good news, telling you he knows what he's doing, amen? It is n I'm going back to the study guide. It is not a pleasant process, but an absolutely necessary one. For those who do not submit to him, he will Im 
he will ultimately fall on them an experience that can only be described as crushing. The choice is yours. Broken before him? I'll take that one. <laughs> Amen. Or crushed by him. And Israel's had this choice. Everybody in this world has that choice. Let's do all we can as God's children, his ambassadors. Amen. To share this good news of this gospel with everyone we possibly can that they too may fall in love with our Lord and, see, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve him the rest of their days, giving it all, giving it all. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Let's see if I've got any more study guide in today's lesson here, okay? I do believe I do. Amen? <clears throat> Sometimes we are like these people, trying to get right with God by keeping his law. We may think that attending church, doing church work, giving offerings, and being nice will be enough. <laughs> After all, we've played by the rules, haven't we? But Paul's words sting. This approach never succeeds. Paul explains that God's plan is not for those who try to earn his favor by being good. It is for those who realize that they can never be good enough and so must depend on Christ. That's us, y'all. Amen? We can be saved only by putting our faith in what Jesus Christ has done. If we do that, we will never be disappointed. That was a good study guide. That'll preach right there, amen? I got another one. The Jews had a worthy goal to honor God, but they tried to achieve it the wrong way by rigid and painstaking obedience to the law. Thus, some of them became more dedicated to the law <laughs> than to God. Oh, you can get lost in the madness. Ain't that right? Amen. So, thus, some of them became more, oh, oh. It says, they thought that if they kept the law, God would have to accept them as his people. But God cannot be controlled. The Jews did not see that their scriptures, the Old Testament, taught that salvation depended on faith not on human effort. <laughs> Praise God. Watch this. I got another one here. The great rock they stumbled over was Jesus. The Jews did not believe in him because he didn't meet their expectations for the Messiah. Some people still stumble over Christ because salvation by faith doesn't make sense to them. They think they must earn their way to God, or perhaps God will simply overlook their sins. Others stumble over Christ because his values are the opposite of the world. He asks for humility, and men, many are unwilling to humble themselves before him. He requires obedience. And many refuse to put their wills at his disposal. Have you stumbled over this rock? Or have you chosen to build your life on it? And we here, we have chosen to build our lives on that foundation stone called Jesus Christ. Are you with me out there? Praise God. <laughs> That was powerful. We'll be going into uh, Romans chapter 10 tomorrow. Amen. Let's pray out of here. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this powerful, 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 life-saving, life-changing, 
life rearranging word. Bury it in our hearts, Father, with like barbed wire, that it may remain in our hearts throughout eternity. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. Father, oh, I feel him. He is right here. I just felt his, he's right here leaning in, <laughs> looking at each and every one of you. Amen. Father, some of these, that you do here today have been diagnosed with a disease, a condition, a diagnosis in their bodies. They're ill from this, that, or the other. And I know what you want. You want them healed from head to toe, and we're going to declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anything going on in your body, I don't care what the doctor called it. And they got some long names, y'all. They want to put a long name you can't even pronounce on what's going wrong. The Lord's about to make it right. It doesn't matter what they call it. It doesn't matter that they say there's no cure. None of that matters. What matters is God's word. And he said in his word, you like Old Testament? I sent my word and healed my people. You like New Testament? By his stripes, we're already healed. His will is that we be healed. And we thank God for each and every one of you because he's about to share his glory with you just like we're reading in the book of Romans. Amen? Don't care what it is. We declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in every area of your body in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. That demon of infirmity got to leave right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some of these, Father, that you love and adore so much, you do here with purpose. <laughs> They're in bondage, Lord. Satan got a yoke on them. He got a chain on them. He's got a stronghold holding your people back. Got them doing things they don't even want to do anymore. But they can't get free. Some of them may be addicted to this drug or that drug or this one over here or that one over there. Some of them, it might be alcohol or both. Some of them might be porn or all of the above. Some of it might be gambling. <coughs> you just want your people free. I feel you, Lord. You are just shoving me on my shoulder trying to get at them. We're going to speak it, Lord. Amen. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, every yoke broken in Jesus' precious and mighty name, Every stronghold torn down in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Every chain ripped off right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And you are now free. No withdrawals. No monkey on your back and no regrets in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. You are now free to live for him, free to be obedient to this word. And those that Christ have set free are truly Free indeed. Some of these. Most gracious Heavenly Father. That you love and adore so much. That you drew here with purpose today. Doctor said they got PTSD, anxiety, depression, all kind of stuff. Lord. Prisoners. Indeed. In their minds. In their emotions. In their hearts. In their spirit. You said that's all gone, too. I, I hear you, Father. Amen. And we're going to speak it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. PTSD gone right now in Jesus' name. Depression gone right now in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now in Jesus' name. Bipolar gone right now in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia gone right now in Jesus' name. 
multiple personality disorder going right now in Jesus' name. I don't know any more names, but they got a lot more names out there, and they may have told you a different name, and they may have told you you got a whole bunch of these names. No, all of it gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Hallelujah. And you are now free in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And some of these, Lord Jesus, that you love and adore so much that you drew here with purpose, with purpose, (laughs) they've gotten into a very dark place in life, and they don't want to come out. But you know each and every one of them. And you know exactly where they're located. Lord, have your way in each and every one of their lives. Go into that dark place and light it up with you. You are the glory of God, the bright morning star, that light that men would not stumble. The light of the world. Light it up with you, Lord. Lend down that nail-pierced hand. Help them to their feet and to your loving and caring and protecting and forgiving arms. Oh, hold them and squeeze them close, Lord. Reassure them they're okay now. They're with you. Walk them out of that place into a new life lit up by you in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. And the church said together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. We'll be back tomorrow. But until we do, can you do us a teeny weeny favor? Have a nice day a good day, a wonderful day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans. See you tomorrow.